I think most people know by now that simply drinking water after exercise is not the most effective way to replenish your fluids. In this video, I'm going to provide a quick guide as to what combination of salts or carbohydrates versus fluid you want to look for if you have different goals. Like for instance, if you want to perform really high again in about six hours from now versus if you don't really have a time limit, you only have to perform again the next day. There's quite a difference there. And we'll also look at what other nutrients you might want to include and what things you likely want to avoid because it can actually be counterproductive. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareika. I'm one of the physiotherapists from sportsinjuryphysio.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for any type of sports injury, all done via video call. Now, if that sounds a bit weird to you, because how can we assess or treat you if we're not touching you? Have a look at the description. I've put a link to our website and we do describe in detail there why video call assessment and treatment work so well for the types of injuries we treat. Why is just drinking water not enough? Well, it comes down to the concept of osmolality. Osmolality is the term that we use to refer to how many particles of things like salts and sugars are suspended in a fluid. Now, the body has a specific osmolality, so it means that there's a good balance usually in the body with regards to how much fluid versus salts and sugars and other things are in there. If you take a substance in, in nature, and it works a bit differently in the body, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But in nature in general, if you have a fluid that has loads of particles suspended in it, next to a fluid that has only a few particles suspended in it, so this one's got a high osmolality, this one a low osmolality, and you've got a membrane in the middle which allows fluid to move from one to the other. In nature, the fluid tends to move from the low osmolality, so a few particles, to the one with a high because we're looking for balance so that it eventually balances out and you, you reach a, a system where there's not an excess of fluid moving from the one to the other. Now, in the body, it works a bit differently because yes, you've got your lining in your stomach as well as your gut that acts as the membrane and stuff will move more slowly from a high osmolality to your body if your body is lower than that as osmolality. But it still moves because you've got other processes that um, assist it. But in general, if we can match a fluid that we drink, that the osmolality is very close to what the body's is, that tends to provide the best fluid transfer plus retention in the body that you just don't just weird all out again. So let's have a look at what the numbers are for this. The best sports drink if hydration or rehydration is your goal after exercise is one that closely matches your body's osmolality and they are called isotonic sports drinks. You must have heard that, that term before. And they will have an osmolality of between 270 to 300 millimoles per kilogram. Now, these drinks are absorbed at a really good rate, but they also importantly have a good balance of salts and electrolytes in them usually which means that your body can absorb them well, but also hold on to it. And it doesn't upset the body's balance between how much fluid it has and the salts it, it has. And that's important because we'll see in a minute how if you have too much fluid compared to the salts, it can actually lead to bad things. If a drink's osmolality is listed as more than 330 millimoles per kilogram, that's seen as a hypertonic sports drink. Now, Yes, they're not going to be that great for hydration because they get absorbed really slowly, but they can be really good if you want to carbo load or replenish your carb stores. So it just depends on your goal with the, with the reason you're taking it in. And then if a drink's osmolality is less than 270 millimoles per kilogram, it's seen as a hypotonic drink. So that means there's l the combination of fluids and salts there's more fluid in there than salts compared to what your body has. Now, these drinks actually get, gets absorbed really quickly, so better than isotonic drinks. But the problem is they do not keep that important salt um, versus fluid balance for the body. So if you don't take in um, salt in your diet while you're drinking these drinks and you drink a really high volume of them, you can actually run into trouble. Now, the least severe trouble you can get is things like um, cramps, but if you do it over a long period and a really high volume, you can actually get hyponatremia, which is a serious condition which leads to swelling of the brain and it can actually be fatal. Now, it's rare. If you eat a normal diet and you get enough salt in, 
you don't risk that. That's why we can drink a lot of water in the day and nothing happens to us. That's normal. Where this becomes a problem is when somebody runs a really, really long race and they swell, sweating a lot, losing a lot of salt, and they're mostly just drinking water. They're not eating anything and they're not taking in salts. Or you've heard you've got to drink a lot of water in the day and you're drinking loads of water, but you're forgetting to eat or you're not adding enough salt to your diet then it can become a problem. So don't be too worried about this, but it's worth mentioning that this is one of the main reasons why high volumes of water when you don't eat a normal diet can be a problem. What if the company hasn't conveniently listed the osmolality for you? Well, then you're going to have to look at the sodium content or the carbohydrate content. And if it contains both of those, you're going to have to figure out what the balance looks like. If we look at the sodium content first, uh, isotonic drink usually contains somewhere between 400 and 700 milligrams sodium per liter. Less than 300 milligrams is likely too little, but it depends on how much carbs obviously is in there as well. If you go above 800, so 800 to 1000 milligrams of sodium could still be effective if the carbs aren't too high, especially for people who lose a lot of salt in their, um, in their sweat. For carbs, the magic number seems to be between 4 to 8 grams per 100 mils, so 4 to 8 percent. If you go over 8 grams per 100 mils, then it's likely going to be hypertonic. And if you go under 4 grams, then it's likely going to be hypertonic. But it obviously also depends on what level of electro, um, salts are in there or sodium is in there. Ah, before I forget, if you're wondering how are you going to ever remember all of this, we've written it all down in a guide and you can download that. The link is in the description of this video. We've also put links there to products that we found on Amazon that has a good isotonic mix in them if you just want to use that. Now you understand what the best type of isotonic drink might be for you. We need to understand how much fluid you actually need to take in. Well, the research shows if you've got more than 24 hours or 24 hours at least before you've got to perform again, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to follow a specific regime. Most athletes eat and drink enough to replenish fully by the next day. But if you have a shorter period of time, then you're going to have to follow a more specific regime. And to understand how much fluid you want to replace, you really need to know how much you lost. And the best way to do that is to weigh yourself before you actually do the exercise session or the, the event. And then afterwards again, because a liter of fluid roughly um, uh, compares to one kilogram of body weight. So you can work it out that way. And then the American Association of Sports Med Medicine recommends that you try or aim to replace 125% to 150% of the weight that you lost in kilograms. And you want to break that fluid portions up into 500 mils every 30 minutes or so. Because if you take too much fluid on in one go, then it actually just stimulates your wee response and you just wee it all out. So it's important to stagger that as well. It's also important to note if your doctor for some reason has restricted how much sodium you can take in. You're going to have to check with them what a safe method is for you because these recommendations may actually be dangerous for you. So if you have a heart condition or kidney condition or some reason why your doctor has said you should be on a low sodium diet, please check with them before you follow any of this advice. If we look at what other things you might want to include in a drink to help with recovery, then protein is definitely on the list. Now, we have got a guide about how to best replenish protein for recovery after exercise. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. But just as a note of interest, there is research to show that milk actually works better than most sports drinks for fluid absorption and retention. The only problem is that it's a little bit slower to be absorbed, the fluid. So it is not ideal to take anything like that, obviously, while you exercise. I think you'll also feel a bit nauseous if you try. But it's, it might be a good option for post Re, um, exercise recovery. Potassium and magnesium are also two very important elements you want to include in your post-exercise recovery. And how you take it in will depend on how long you've got to recover. If you're able to eat just general food, then bananas are obviously a good source of that. But also your green leafy vegetables, sweet potatoes, there's a very long list. You can just Google that. And you could also include it in your drinks if you don't have that much time to actually recover. If you're my other half, you might be in the camp of people who think that drinking beer after exercise is a good way to hydrate. Well, 
The American Association of Sports Medicine does say that drinks, caffeinated drinks, as well as drinks with low levels of alcohol in it, like some beers, might be okay to rehydrate, but in moderation, not just beer. You actually do need some, some water as well. If you're going to drink hard liquor, like uh, your vodkas or anything like that, that's actually going to cause you to dehydrate more. So that's going to be totally counterproductive. Brilliant. Hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions, just ask them in the comments. And if you need more help with an injury, you're welcome to consult one of the team via video call. The link to the website is in the description of this video. Take care.